So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to use the jointer, which is this tool behind me safely. The jointer is really, really good at taking rough milled surfaces like this and making them flat to create one flat reference face. The jointer is also really good at making one smooth reference edge. So it's good for making flat faces and it's great for making flat edges. The one thing that you should never do on the jointer is try to joint end grain, which is this section over here. You can tell if something is end grain if it's got the tree rings on it. So to begin, you always want to make sure that you have got the necessary safety precautions. So first of all, always have eye protection on. Second of all, the jointer will start to get really, really loud. So you definitely want hearing protection. And then you also want to take a look at how you're dressed. So make sure you're wearing closed-toed shoes, make sure your long hair is tied back, but also the biggest danger is actually having like loose floppy clothing getting stuck in the machine. And if your long sleeves get caught in the machine, it's pulling you into the machine as well. So just take off your hoodie. All right, so let's take a look at the different parts of the jointer and how we safely interact with this. So right down here is the on and the off switch. So this turns it on, off, and this is an emergency stop switch and you can just bump it with your knee or with your hand to shut it off. Please just use this in emergencies. If possible, please use the off switch. Now, right over here is the lockout switch. So because this machine is huge, and you can't unplug it anytime you want to make an adjustment, you have to lock it out. So right now, this switch is in the live position. So when I turn the machine on, power will go through it. It's essentially like it was plugged in. However, if you take the switch and you flip it down in the locked out position, when you try to turn the switch on, it doesn't turn on. That's because the machine is plugged in. All right, so now that we have locked out or unplugged the machine, let's take a look at the various parts of the jointer. So the risk of the jointer is actually covered up by this thing, which we'll talk about in a second. But over here are a series of really, really sharp knives that are attached to this cutter head. And so when this machine is on, these cutters will be spinning at a very, very high speed. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that no part of you or your body comes into contact with this spinning cutter head. Otherwise, it's not going to end well for you. Fortunately, this cutter head is usually protected by this thing over here, which is called a guard. And this guard over here is spring loaded. If you start to use the jointer and you notice that this guard here is not present, so all you see is something that looks like this, or if you find that this guard is there, but it doesn't spring back when I push on it, don't use the jointer and let the teacher know immediately. There's no guard, it's not safe to use. When you are using the jointer, there are a few important rules about what wood you can and cannot run through the jointer. And the first and the most important rule is actually written right here on the fence itself. And that is the minimum length of the piece of wood that you can run through the jointer is 12 inches. Now what I've done here is I've drawn an arrow and a line to show you exactly how long 12 inches are. So if you're sitting here with this piece of wood and you're wondering, hmm, is this 12 inches or longer? What you can do is just hold it up against that line. And as you can see, it's just over 12 inches. So this piece is safe to run through the jointer. On the other hand, this one clearly is way under and is not safe to run through the jointer. Most jointer accidents happen when people are running really tiny pieces through. And what the risk is, is that as the student is pushing it through the jointer, this really tiny piece runs the risk of dipping down into the machine. And if that dips down while this thing is on, your hand runs the risk of being fed into that jointer there. So the second rule about running things through the jointer is that you are never allowed to run the end grain through the jointer. So this is the end grain, and this is the end grain. 
And if you're not sure, the end grain is essentially the parts where you can sort of see the tree rings. Sometimes they look like a whole bunch of sad faces, if you can see a sad face here. And sometimes they look like a whole bunch of happy faces, like you can see over here. So I never, ever, ever, don't ever do this, want to see a student taking a piece of wood and running it through the jointer like such. And if you look really closely for this piece over here, you can sort of see the tree rings or the sad face. And you can see the tree rings over here. So that's end grain. So while this piece may be longer than 12 inches, I still never want to see a student trying to run a piece of wood like this on the jointer. If you want to clean up this end grain, there's other tools for it. So while you're not allowed to join end grain, you are allowed to join face grain or this surface and you are allowed to joint edge grain, which is this surface here. And while this is less obvious, nails are made of metal. So please don't run wood with nails through my jointer. You'll wreck my blades. What you will do sometimes is you will glue up pieces of wood like this or laminate pieces of wood like this. And you'll see that there are bits of hard glue all along the surface. Just to extend the life of my jointer blades, please take some time to scrape off as much of the glue as possible before running it on the jointer. So I'm going to begin by talking about how we can joint faces or the big wide surface. Students will often ask me, hey Mr. Ao, which uh, face should I joint first? Should I joint this face first or this one? And my response is, it actually depends on the situation. In this case over here, both faces are fairly even. And so in that case, it doesn't matter if I run it through this way in the jointer or if I flip it over and run it this way on the jointer. But where it does actually matter is when your board is U-shaped, much like this. As you can sort of see, it looks like a big sad face. In this case, the face that you joint first does actually matter. And the rule of thumb is make sure that it's stable on the table. So what I mean by that is Right now, give it a little bit of a rock. So I'm going, okay, there's a little bit of rocking here. Then see if the other side is safer. This is much worse. If I'm taking a piece of wood and I'm running it through the jointer, I definitely don't want to have this wobbling the entire time. So this is the more stable side. There's less rocking on this side. So I'm actually going to joint this side and make this side flat first. Another way to think about it is if your piece of wood looks like a face and we've got happy face over here and we've got sad face over here, you always want to get rid of the sad face. As I keep saying with the jointer, what we don't want to happen is our hands going into this cutter pad right over here. So to prevent that from happening, anytime we're pushing wood along the jointer, we want to have some form of a push stick. Usually, when you're jointing faces like this, I would use a yellow push pad like this. It's got these little grippy hook things that go along the edge like such. And it's got a nice tall handle so that I can actually hold it and push it along the jointer like such. Always use a push pad. What you should never do is you should never, don't do this, just use your hands. Don't ever just hold it like this and push it through the jointer because what we're afraid of is something's gonna happen to your wood and your hands are gonna go into that cutter head. So now I'm gonna go and joint this face. So you have your piece of wood over here, you have your push block, you have your eye protection on, you have your ear protection on, turn the machine on. jointer has removed this material over here as it's starting to flatten the surface out. Let's run that again. My hands are always on the push block, 
never on the piece of wood, and feeding this way. Now we talked about jointing faces. We know that we cannot joint ends, so don't do that. But you can also joint edges. Joint an edge, the process remains the same. You want to have some sort of a stick to help you push so that your hands aren't over the cutter head. And so for that, when you're jointing edges, you're gonna go and use a push stick that looks like this. The second thing that we want to do to minimize any potential risk is that if you take a look, we have a lot of knife over here to cut a surface that's actually really small. And what we can actually do is we can actually cover up the blade that we don't need. That's called minimizing the exposed blade. So let's cover up more of this blade with the fence. Anytime you're making some sort of an adjustment, like adjusting the fence, the very first thing that you should do is lock out or unplug the jointer. So let me show you how to do that again. I'm gonna come down. And then right over here is the lockout switch. The switch is up in the live position. So you take the switch, lock it out, or unplug it. You know it's locked out because it says off, it's, or it's in the locked out position. But even then, I'm paranoid, and I want to double check to make sure that this machine won't turn on while my hands are over the blade. And so to do that, I'm going to go back to the machine over here. And because I unplugged it, I expect that this machine won't turn on. It doesn't. Perfect. Now I can adjust the fence so that I have the least amount of blade possible. So to take this fence over here and push it forward to reduce this blade, there's a knob over here that says adjust fence and over here are the directions. Push this knob down this way to loosen it and push it this way towards me to tighten it. So I'm gonna push it just a little bit in the loose direction. And now I can grab the fence like this and I can move it back and forward. Push this forward. And as you can see now, there's a lot less extra blade. All right, so uh, let me show you how to joint an edge. Put your eye protection on, put your ear protection on. Turn on the machine. Now, I want you to carefully watch what I'm doing with this hand over here. I'm taking this hand and I'm pushing the wood up against the fence. And I've got my other hand and I'm holding the push stick. So here we go. Now my hand is coming close to the cutter head, so I'm going to push my hand back, okay, I'm going to push my hand back again, okay, my hand has nowhere else to go, so now I'm going to put my hand over and run that through, so let's see that again. So our goal here is to make sure that this hand which is pushing it up against the fence, never comes within this range over here. Because this range over here is where the cutter is, and that's a danger zone. So I'm gonna go like this. Push back, push back. Oh no, my hand has nowhere else to go. Over. Faster, you can go. What you definitely don't want to do is you never want to have your hand pass over the cutter head. So this, don't do this, don't do this, because in this case, both of your hands are coming over the cutter head. Alternatively, although I'm using the push stick here, I don't want to be doing this either, because again, this hand here is right in that danger zone.
If you're running something through, I cannot stress this enough. And the man go back and over. Shut off the machine when you're done. All right, thanks so much, and uh, that's how we uh, use the jointer.